and welcome to a new season of Inside HCAM. I'm HCAM Station Manager Jim Cousins, and I produce this show to keep you informed on what's happening here at your television station. Because HCAM TV is just that, Hopkinton's television station. Our mission is to bring you our community, government, schools, and the people and organizations that make up Hopkinton. We train residents to use our equipment and make TV shows, and we work really hard to get all of that out to you on our channels, website, and social media. Today on my show, I have a special guest, Mike Prate, who was the inaugural president of the HCAM Board of Directors and served in that capacity for over 10 years. We'll be having an in-depth conversation about all that, but first, I am joined by our production coordinator, Mike Tarosian, to get an overview of the upcoming fall season. All right, Mike. Hey, Jim. So I know we have a record number of nine shows nine in pre-production. Nine shows, which is, that's the first for us, to have nine going into a new season. I know, I know. So tell me about it. Give me a, like a one-liner about a couple of them. All right, a couple of them. I love to start off with one of my favorites. It's going to be Highlights from the Hill. Mm -hmm. And that's with uh, Dr. Kathy McLeod, the superintendent of schools. And uh, every month we'll be finding out what's going on with the schools, not just teacher stuff, but everything in the district. She has an awesome co-host for her show, too. Yeah, I heard. What's his name again? Yeah, Jim something. Jim right. something. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and another show that's uh, new again is the Chief's Log. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's new, we have a new chief. So along with uh, Police Chief Ed Lee, uh, Fire Chief Steve Slamet will be joining him and will everything public safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm also really excited too because we also have some current affairs issues shows and we have some kind of like health uh, and mental health related shows that we haven't had before. And, and a help desk. This, yes. is, this is gonna be your way into town government, yeah. knowing the ins and outs on how town government works for you and how you navigate through town hall. Right, right. So I know everything is in pre-production now. Right, we'll have correct. you back in the yes. future as things get kind of underway and we'll be seeing how that goes. Can't wait. All right. Can't wait. And now I'm going to ask Mike Prey to join us on the set. And he, as I mentioned, was the first president of the board of directors of HCAM. And I've been working with him closely for well over 10 years. And I'm really excited to uh, have this time to chat with him. Mike, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Jim. All right. Now, before we get into that, OK, you two Mikes had your own show <laughs> called Dive In, Drive In, yeah. where you had classic B-movies, and you would introduce them, and you would talk yeah. about them and stuff like that. So I thought we would have a fun little segment here called Classic Cartoon Quotes. And Mike has a stack of quotes over there, <laughs> and he's going to put those back. And he is going to pick them up, and he's going to read them. And he can read them in a voice if it helps. And you're going to see how many classic cartoon oh characters you can identify in 60 seconds. OK. All right, are you ready? Yep. All right, go. All right, here we go. Well, what do you know? Well, what do you know? Uh, All right. Oh, wait, maybe how's it? Well, uh, what do you know? Uh, I haven't got a clue. That's, All right. that's goofy. Oh. All right, uh, up, up and away. Well, that's got to be like underdog, right, or, or Superman? Superman. Oh, okay. We'll go Superman. So you uh, I'll cartoon. give a little visual. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Superman was a cartoon. Was a cartoon. Uh, yeah, true, huh? June, stop this crazy thing. Oh, that's the Jetsons. Uh, let's do what we do best, Scoob, eat. Oh, that's Scooby-Doo or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. The other guy. <laughs> Uh, oh, I forgot. Shaggy. 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 You got it, yeah. yeah. Okay, 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 okay. That's all I can stand, and I can't stand no more. That's Popeye. All right. Uh, no, I can't do this one, but Fui foiled again. Oh, I know what that is. I just can't. Uh, oh, I give up. Boris Bannon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was uh, a good show, actually. Don't you mean curses foiled again? Isn't that uh, uh, the Royal Mountie guy? No, the other no. one. Oh. The other one. Oh. His partner. Oh, uh, Natasha? Natasha. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, I'm you're a cool five out of I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm, you stopped with that one because I had Tweety Bird next. Well, I'm a, but I'm a Warner Brothers person, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, it's so hard to find those yeah. um, because everything now is like from the 90s with all yeah. these like other. 
an obscure yeah, cartoon. Well, you right? have to YouTube him because I still watch uh, Bugs Bunny Baseball, which I think is my favorite yep. of all the yeah, great one. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty all neat. Right. Okay. So that was a lot of fun. Mike, I got to go. Back to the control room. All, all right, right. Awesome. thanks. All right, Mike. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about HCAM. Sure. So HCAM now, I think we're like 14 years old now. Yeah, right. Because it was 2004. Yeah, 16. So it's 14 years old now. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm interested to know when you first heard about the fact that the Board of Selectmen were forming the nonprofit HCAM and were um, populating a board of directors. How did you first find out about that and what made you decide that you wanted to be a part of it? Well, I, so I have a degree in broadcast journalism back uh, a few years and uh, I thought, well, I, I really love the television thing and I, I was really a radio person. I did play-by-play -play sports for our college radio station and things like that, so I thought, well, I'd like to get involved, and being the rec director, I knew in town hall they always had trouble getting people to volunteer for board. So I thought it would be such an easy thing and a, and, a, and a good way to finally, as my father used to joke, I get, I'm finally using my degree, which I never you know, had a chance to do. Um, so I just went down and uh, put my name in, and um, somehow uh, I, I ended up getting it, I think, the Cable Commission recommended me to the selectmen and then I got it. So. Mm -hmm. And um, when you were, f when the board first met and there were five, I don't even know if the um, Articles of Incorporation had been accepted yet. I think you guys were still finalizing that. Yeah, we did. And we were just putting that stuff together and, you know, it was pretty informal and it was almost like one of these uh, he's sitting at the end of the table, so he's the president kind of thing. Yeah. Or, uh, and in most years, uh, I didn't get too much fight for the position because, as you said in the opening, I, I, I've been the president uh, up until this year. Yeah. And uh, I don't think too many people really wanted the responsibility either. You know, everybody was a volunteer, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I was in town a lot with my rec job, so I thought, well, that would be a nice thing too. So... I got elected, and pretty much every year, no one really, yeah, fought it over, fought over it. So right, yeah. and you know, and you were mentioning how um, when you first heard about it, working in town hall, working on the parks and rec department, mm -hmm. you kind of knew about you know like governing boards and stuff like that. However, HCAM is a really unique situation where even though the selectmen formed us, we are a standalone. Nonprofit. And I think that was one of the attractions, Jim, was mm -hmm. the fact that. Although we're tied to the town government, we really were told in the beginning, hey, you guys are going to run a corporation. And I had a business background, too, which I think helped me get the position also. I, I used to own a small printing company before I took the rec department job. Mm -hmm. And so I knew what a corporation needed to be run like. And, uh, and so, so I, I think it was a pretty good fit. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it was, it was kind of... Uh, hairy in the beginning and uh but it was really a joy for all these years so mm. now i don't know i i don't know how easy this will be but okay. forget the last 14 years okay mm -hmm. and when you were first uh voted onto the board and you had your meeting and you knew it was a community access television station uh, what did you kind of envision that looking like well, so my vision, and I think it was pretty much close to the same vision I had when I left, was to cover as many in-town things as possible, to try to uh, get us out into the public, get us, um, to me, I was a big sports person, so I took on that side of it also. Um, as you know, I did uh, the high school football, hockey, mm -hmm. and baseball, and basketball teams. But I, I understood that, uh, you know, I really wanted it to, to be geared towards Hopkinton. And by hiring you, who had the same, I think you and I really had the same vision, too, when it first started, really focus on trying to get town items on air. And, mm -hmm. I th and, and that was my vision. To this day, it, uh, the day I left, it was my vision. And we've, I think we've done a pretty good job of that. So mm -hmm. um, that's, that's where we stood. And I think... 
that was part of convincing the rest of the board that the direction we should go in also. So. Yeah. And, you know, I always remember um, Lee, who was one of the original members, yeah. and she was a lawyer. I remember the time she was at the meeting, and she said, look, we are a real corporation with real money and real employees because right. some people were really, you know, okay, well, we were formed by the town. We're almost like a town department. But well, I found, I, Jim, true, true, and I found myself almost every once in a while saying that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that I don't believe we're a corporation. And Lee was great. She, she was phenomenal in the beginning, and I wish we could have retained her. She was so good. Yeah. Actually, the entire makeup of the, of the boards over the years, mm -hmm. I was the one constant until this year. The, the people were great. I mean, really, we didn't have any squabbling. Uh, we all had the same kind of vision, and we had our disagreements, but nothing earth-shattering, you know? Right. And uh, we, we really did get focused, I think, after the second year that, hey, we are a corporation. We don't want to, uh, uh, you know, shortchange the town. And if you remember, my statement to you always was, I don't want to be the president of the TV station that goes in the red. Mm -hmm. Do whatever we have to do to stay in the black, and, and we did that. So uh, it was a really great accomplishment. So. Yeah, I've used that line so much. Yeah. I think it's such a great line. <laughs> yeah. you know? And one, actually one of the other, I would say the major contributions you made, especially at the very beginning, um, was when you actually found the space that we're in now. Because we were originally in the high school. Yeah, it was. Um, Kind of uh, not uh, bittersweet's the wrong word. We were getting pressed to adhere to some rules that we probably wouldn't be able to operate our vision, your and my vision, mm -hmm. of what we wanted to do with this station. And I just casually mentioned uh, to, I think it was Ed Beckett, I ran into him in town hall. I said, boy, we're really trying to think about moving HCAM out of the sewing class that was in the basement of the middle school or somewhere over there, wherever we were. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, you know, if you guys want to consider my basement, uh, in, in the, I, I think I could get something to happen for you. And as far as I was concerned, the whole group of them have been a great landlord for our tenure here. So, uh, and then that's how it happened. We just, oh, yeah, I'm interested. And I presented the idea to you, and then you took the reins. and got us going with it but uh mm -hmm. it was yeah it was kind of it was it was kind of well, the school basically forced us out in a small way i mm -hmm. wouldn't say forced us but but it was hard to operate both operations in the same room. That, that's a good way to put it yeah right. and i when we first were floating this idea i was concerned that the school you know um would not see the wisdom of that, mm -hmm. but even the, the superintendent's representative on the board, she quickly realized that, you know what, we will have a studio 24-7 and HKM will have a studio 24-7, and it actually was good for both locations. Yeah, no, and it turned out tremendous. I mean, look at, look at the place now. It's been rebuilt at least once. Mm -hmm. um, Expanded to three times our size. Right, and so um, I think it, the vision that we had, especially you and I in the beginning, this is bigger than the vision I thought we'd ever get to, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I, we were so happy to be out of the thumb of another landlord mm -hmm. to where we'd have a little bit more freedom, and it turned out way better than we could have hoped. And I have always said from the very beginning, you know, I've been working in Access TV for over 25 years, and this is by far the most professional nicest location we've ever been in and with the expansion that we have done here mm. it's the best access studio that i've ever worked in yeah well i i've never been involved in any other one but um we you you've always had this so without blowing uh, smoke to you you've always had this vision of this and um i think the combination of the two of us really mm -hmm. convinced the town and our rest of our board, hey, this is a direction we could go in, and yeah. it really has been a big success. So. Do you know what the, the largest variance for my vision, my job has become? Mm. The paperwork. Oh, yeah. Because you know? yeah. before, whenever I worked in Access TV, I worked for a cable company. So I was right. part of a department. You know, there was a, a person above me who would do all of that. Yeah. And now, 
running this place, it's really like running, you know, a small business. Well, it is. So you, you and I got our wish. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you had the brunt of us being a corporation. Right. And there's and taxes and, yes. and payroll and, yeah. and bills. And, mm -hmm. and you're right. So the, the, the drop back a little bit, but you're running it. So, yeah. So, and I mean, and I mean, it's not a complaint because I, the way I feel about it is by me doing that stuff, it allows us to be the best shepherd of the money that we've been entrusted right. with to make it work as much as we can to be the access station that we are, rather than you know hiring somebody to do some of these things. Right. And that's honestly was so important to me, knowing that you had been a small business owner, because I never had been before. Yeah, and I mean, the, the part of it too is you, you look at, uh, you know, where our goals were too, right? You, we were able to control our goals mm -hmm. by, by being our own little corporation. Right. Where, whereas if we had reported to Comcast or whoever at the time, I forgot who it was, right? Yeah. It was Chart, no, not, whatever. Uh, yeah, Media One. Media One. We would have had a, been inflicted to what they, they wanted. And mm -hmm. uh, look, we, we got what we wanted and um, it really turned out I think better than I could hope for, and it's actually a sadness that I'm not involved in anymore in a little bit, but um, I left this place in your good hands, and so I, I, uh, I think what we, what we wanted to accomplish was tremendous. Yeah. And it really, really stayed on, I think, it stayed on the course we were trying to get to. So. Yeah, and I am really sure, my heart of hearts, that if you weren't getting a house with an ocean view, <laughs> that you would still be. I, I don't know what I'm going to do this fall when I was doing the football games, and, uh, and, and I, do, I do miss it a little bit. But, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, right. I, I, if I was still in Hopkinton, I'd yeah. be here. So. so I want to mention that a little bit because, you know, in addition to um, being the president of the board for 14 years, you also have been such a backbone of so many sports that we cover, you know, um, announcing them and organizing coverage and being a part of that. So I'd like to just talk for a minute about what that's meant to you. Well, the joke, the joke always was, um, not that I was terribly vocal when I wasn't announcing, but I think my wife thought it was kind of funny that uh, when I put the headphones on, they, I wouldn't be yelling out stuff at my kids. and. Uh, so I started, I think, with hockey because nobody really was doing it, or they were doing it. And uh, the, the gentleman, uh, Tom McIntyre, and, and someone else, their kids retired, and I just took it on while my kids were playing for the school. And then I stayed with it another five years after my kids graduated. Mm -hmm. And I love sports. And you know, at some point when I was younger and getting out of college in New York, I I was going to be a play-by-play -play announcer for a major league team. Mm -hmm. And then reality struck, and the student loans came due. So, so the the joke I said in the beginning of the program here was, you know, my dad now thinks I'm finally using my degree yeah. uh, when I was working for H Camp. And then um, I think I did baseball next. Uh, yeah, no, football next. A um, couple of the guys retired there. Nobody was really doing baseball, so we did baseball. And then um, I ended up doing basketball the last few years when the, um, Chuck and uh, uh, I forgot who it was uh, retired. Mm -hmm. And uh, But, you know, the one constant, and I have to throw him some, uh, some props, is Mike Terosian. Mm -hmm. Mike and I saw a vision about doing it as many sports as we could. I think we ended up doing, uh, I did the field hockey championship game when this, uh, Joan Bannon's team won the state championship. Yeah. So we did that. And I'm not sure if we did any, I did anything else, but uh, the vision was, uh, you know, and I think, I think I convinced you a little bit too, although you're not a sports person, that the community would watch those events because there's tons of kids mm -hmm. and maybe I can see my kid on television and I think that's why we had a pretty good following right. in those sports and so I'm hoping Tom continues to do it because oh, he's yeah. good at it also. So They definitely are. Yeah. In fact, one of the things um, that's leading up to the other thing I'm going to mention, which you know about, is uh, one of the things that I valued over all those years is you always just wanted the best that we could do. And if something wasn't right, you would say, why? You know, why do we have to do it this way? Could we do it the right way? Could it be better? 
and that really made the um, the whole production environment stronger. Yeah, and I think too, Jim, you guys were easy to react to what could be termed diva status when we're out there announcing. And you said, well, why can't we do this and why can't we do that? I would voice those to you and Mike, and somehow you guys would figure out how to make it work. Could we have set up better facilities way back in the beginning? Probably not, but we, I think as a station, we kind of learned, hey, maybe we could do that, or no, we can't do that. And mm -hmm. so our production end stuff ended up being so much better towards the end of my tenure here than mm -hmm. the one camera shoot with you know headphones that didn't work and <laughs> you know that the, the problems that you have in an on-site place. Can you remember when we originally started football Mike was setting up scaffolding right. and we had tarps right. over there yeah. and it was like I mean yeah no, we got day. we got the benefit of being into the into the press box yeah. and then there's so many funny things that tripod falling over at the <laughs> rink you know, right yeah. down on top of two or three people yeah. that was sitting in front of us. Uh, and baseball was always fun. You had to watch foul balls going in the location we had. Yeah. Um, and so, no, from the sports end, you know, I think we, we had the right vision, all of us here, that we knew the community would watch that event. I mean, the football games were broadcast at 10 o'clock at night down at Cornell's where all the parents and coaches would end up after games and stuff. So yeah. it really worked out pretty well. Yeah, it does. In fact, that kind of legacy of you know all of the years that you spent improving and expanding and just being a part of it is what led us, the staff, to create the Michael J. Prate Award, no. which we give out once a year to a person who has dedicated a long-term commitment to you know the quality and the production of HCAM. I'll tell you the truth, Jim. If I wasn't tw if I was 20 miles closer, I'd probably still be doing all the sports. Yeah. It's just, uh, and I di I did like it. And actually, it became a little easier when my boys were out of the school system. Um, and not that you know the, the the vision we have on the high school sports end is you don't want to be like professional in uh, comment commenting professionally. These are kids, okay? Mm -hmm. They make mistakes. They're not getting paid. Mm -hmm. And so you have to draw back into the harsh criticism that the kid just made a mistake or they should have done this. Or, and so I, I think we, we as a station tried to keep that in mind also, you know? So, mm -hmm. And I think, again, back to what I originally was saying is the community watches these events. They, they really do. So. Yeah. 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 So, um, well, I do wish you well. Thank you. In your future, and I hope that once you get settled and once you're comfortable and maybe you're just like, you know, looking at the sunset and stuff, your town also has a community TV yeah. station, and who knows if you'll pop up something there. But I did, I did want to end on just like, just like recognizing the fact that not only were you the board president uh, for my entire time here and empowered me to be able to do, you know, what I could do, um, and also a valuable part of all that we do here. You really were a mentor because I had never done anything like this before and it would have been a lot harder for me to learn as I was going. Well, I appreciate that. And, and I, without turning this into a tremendous love fest because yeah. you know my personality, yeah. uh, I hired the right person. I really felt as an owner of a small business back in the day and then taking this on, you hire the right people and you let them go do their job. I, I, I think if I had to be firm, which was rare with what was happening here, we, we both had the mutual respect that, that okay, he's the president and, and uh, as such, I should follow what he says. But typically, Jim, you, you, when you, and you find that as a manager of this place, if you hire the right people, you let them go do their thing, you, you keep them under a little bit of an umbrella, but you don't want to stifle them. And I think all those years that we worked together, you, you never really, I never had to really worry about this place. And so being a volunteer president, that made it a heck of a lot easier, you know? So, yeah. And it was great. You know, like I said, we had four applicants when we hired you and you were clearly the best and it turned out to be, you know, where you took it on. And so, uh, and I appreciate those kind words. Thanks. Yeah. I really do. So a few more months now and I'll be taking over the spot as the longest lasting HCM employee. <laughs> yeah, actually, 
Yeah, because you were only a couple days behind me, right? Though? No, no, a couple months behind you. I don't think it was right away. Well, who was running? Yeah, I guess we, we never remembered all the historical parts, but mm -hmm. we, had a, we had a corporation and we had a station. Who was running it? I, you were the only person I ever hired. Yeah. In the beginning. Well, I was a volunteer before, and oh. Mike was a volunteer, too. Oh, okay. So, you know, we might have kept things going, and, but there was a lot of uh, discussion, you know, between here and the school side, and... Um, I know I started April 1st, which is nice because it's easy to remember. Um, and I know the Articles of Incorporation came in earlier in 2004. Yeah. So I think you, the board had met a couple times before. Well, it's funny because we could probably do a boring whole nother show about <laughs> what has gone on around here. Yeah. Too much of the intricacies of what the station was like, but yeah. uh, it was a blast and I'm so glad I volunteered to do it. So Yeah. Well, I am really glad to have met you. All and right. Thanks. I wish you well in the right. next Thank phase. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. And thank you for joining us for this episode of Inside HCAM. If you would like to know more about your television station and all the programming produced here, head over to our website, hcam.tv. We also have a vibrant presence on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. If you have a question, comment, concern, or desire to make television programming, please feel free to contact me at jim at hcam.tv. On behalf of everyone here who makes it all happen, Thanks for watching and see you soon.